In today's video, we're going to take a look at the availability annotation and property to check if you can run your code on a various platform or iOS version. Before we get into things, start by dropping a like down below. If you're new here, welcome, hit subscribe. Let's open up Xcode and create a new project and dig into the available attribute. So we're going to stick with a iOS app template. I am going to call this available test. We'll go ahead and stick with Swift storyboard. Go ahead and continue. Toss this on to your desktop or wherever you'd like. And the first thing we're going to do is just give this a run in a simulator. We are going to talk through what this annotation is, and then we'll take a look at a real world example and something I find myself personally doing pretty frequently. Now, of course, this works with Swift UI as well. It is a language feature. It is not tied to UI kit in any way, shape or form, but I just chose UI kit for the sake of simplicity today. So the first thing I'll go ahead and do here for the sake of our example momentarily is just set a background color. So the availability annotation as well as macro allows us to basically say, hey, if the app is running on iOS 13, do this, or iOS 14, do that. We can also use it to check various platforms. Now, that would be in the world of, um, are we running on Mac OS? So let's say we're building a Swift UI app that is targeting universal, meaning it can run on iOS, iPad OS, Mac OS, and in certain cases, we want a screen to show up only on Mac OS. We're gonna focus on the former today. I'm gonna have another video on the platform specific, but let's take a example. So let's say our app, which currently targets iOS 15 and up, Let's say we want to target iOS, I'll go ahead and change this to perhaps 13 and up, but we definitely still want to use some of the new functionalities introduced in iOS 14 and up, but we don't want to annoy everyone with 13 and plus Xcode won't let us use that stuff because, you know, we got to support 13. So how do you go about actually doing that? So what we can do is we can say if available, we can say iOS 14 and we're going to toss a star in there go ahead and run this code. So perhaps I have a function in here, which is iOS 14 setup. And we plan to use some new functionality and APIs in here that are only available to iOS 14 and up. We could add a check like this and essentially call this function right in here. Now, this is a little silly because we know this function itself should only be available to iOS 14 runtimes. So conversely, instead of doing this conditionality here, what we can do is we can mark this at available and very similar syntax. We can just say this is available to iOS 14 and up. And that's basically all there is to this annotations. It is stupid simple to use, but it is actually pretty commonly used, especially when developing frameworks or applications that target hundreds of millions of users, because you can't just expect everyone to be on the latest and greatest, either because the users did an update or device and hardware limitations. But let's do an example to see this in action. So, the view controller we have here by default isn't embedded in a navigation controller. I'm going to do that via the storyboard. This is slightly irrelevant for the scope of this video, but I'm gonna do this for our example. So bear with me here. We'll go to editor, embed in navigation controller. We're gonna need that momentarily. So what I wanna do is when this view appears, I want to wait one second and push on another view controller. We're not gonna make any custom view controller here. We'll just use the base, base class, but I wanna do it to illustrate uh, what we just learned. So I'll go ahead and say view controller is a new view controller. We'll just go ahead and give it a background color to discern it visually. And then we're gonna go ahead and say navigation controller, push view controller, VC animated true. Now there is a new property which Apple introduced in iOS 14 and it is off of the navigation item. And I believe it's called the back button display mode. And actually, in fact, if we click into this, you can see that Apple uses the availability annotation all over the place in their own declarations because similar to how you would build your own apps targeting lots of users, the iOS SDK is versioned based on you know the major version or even minor versions. So you can see here that this back button display mode is available to iOS 14 and up. So we're gonna go ahead and use this. Now because our application is targeting iOS 13 and up, 
let's say I go ahead and I assign this to minimal and we can see that Xcode has already caught up. It's actually basically yelling at us because we're targeting iOS 13. So it's saying it's only available on 14 or newer and it's already giving us the availability check that we introduced uh, ourselves through this fix command. So essentially, if I go ahead and fix it here, you'll see, well, it's sort of screwed it up here because it inserted it in the wrong spot. Let me just go ahead and fix this. What it's saying is, you know, if we are running in an iOS 14 environment, we can assign it. Otherwise, fall back to some other API. Basically, you're on your own in this else block. Take care of it yourself. So let me go ahead and comment this out. And we'll go ahead and give this a run, see what it actually looks like. And then I will give it a run again. So it looks like we have a run time error. Let's see what our issue is or build time, I should say. So it looks like implicit use of self. Yes, that is a mistake on my part. We'll go ahead and toss that there, give it a run and we should see our blue screen. And then in a second, the red view controller gets pushed. So we see this back button here. We have a back title and the Chevron. If I go ahead and uncomment this, the minimal display mode essentially just gets rid of the text. So we should only see the icon. And if we go ahead and do that, lo and behold, we only see the back icon. Now, of course, in the uh, else block here, we would want to handle this in some you know, nice way that is actually gonna mimic functionality. And what I have personally been doing is you can just nil out the title or rather assign an empty string to it, I should say, to the back button title, which mimics this functionality. And essentially, instead of having the availability of this property, you just kind of get the same functionality by just um, doing this, which is debatably a hack, but I digress. The point here is the availability check is something that you're going to see a lot, especially if you uh, get introduced to a large code base, or especially if you're working in Swift UI and want to be targeting things available to, you know, Swift UI 2 users. So basically iOS 13, as well as Swift UI uh, 3 and upcoming 4 later this year. So that is all I've got for you guys today. Pretty simple video, pretty simple little trick. Let me know in the comments down below if you've used this annotation. Hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, thanks again for watching. Let's keep this channel going and growing. Hit subscribe, share it on Twitter, LinkedIn. Let's connect on all the socials. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.